Do More is a call to action for all Australians to be allies, making the commitment to become more informed, more educated, and more engaged in creating positive change to challenge racism. This conversation series seeks to make change through storytelling. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea, and community, and what we learn through storytelling culture of the longest continuous civilization on the planet. We pay our respect to elders, past and present. I'm Linda Mariano, and I'm so happy to be speaking to Nana Awusu Afriye about not only your experiences as a top athlete, but also as a young woman in the world. Hey, Nana, hello. Hi, how are you today? I'm feeling good. We're going to talk about how racism shows up in your everyday life. But I thought we would begin by talking about what it was like for you growing up, Nana. I came from a very big family of six children. Um, my parents are from Africa and Ghana and they moved here about, my dad moved here about 10 years before I was born and my mum was a bit later on. I have five brothers and one sister and we all went to different schools, but we were always together. So I had a really good childhood growing up. We were all very sporty kids and the boys were very, very academic. Um, we all had different hobbies, um, which made my life very exciting when I was little. Let's get into the ideas of your identity. When did you start to become perhaps aware of your identity and who you were in terms of your race? Um, from a very young age, my father was one of the first Ghanaians to start the Ghanaian Association in Melbourne and Australia. So my dad was very involved with the Ghanaian community. So on weekends and stuff, we'd have um, gatherings and, you know, we sang and we talked about our culture and how we could help um, make the community more integrated and um, help them adapt to a new area from moving from West Africa. So I've always had my culture around me. Also, my mother's side all still lives there. So it's a very big part of me. But my father's side, most of them have moved down here. So I'm always around that culture. Wow. What was your father like in terms of encouraging you to run and being part of the athletic field? My dad was one of the most supportive parents when it came to athletics. Um, when he knew that I loved it and my little brother loved it, he signed up to the athletics committee. He was there at every race. I laughed because he used to do the tagging so you knew what time you ran and I hated long events. So he'd always know if I skipped out on the longer running events because he'd always be the person recording the times. My dad was super supportive of me being a runner also, my oldest brother was a runner and also a coach to some of Australia's long and middle distance runners. So running's mm. always been a big factor in my life. Recently, my dad has started opening, about, opening up about stories that have happened and I didn't realise some of them, but he told me one time, the new athletics track in Melbourne had just been built and I just won my first race and I'm pretty sure I had gotten a record. And a lady from the newspaper came up and said, is that your daughter? My dad was like, yes, I'm very proud of her. And she said, your daughter is going to go very far in this sport. But one thing that will hold her back is her name. If you want her to go far, you should change her name. And I recently just heard that for the first time. And I was just like shocked. And I can't imagine how upset my father was that's a name that's being carried down from his father and his grandfather and it continues on and for someone to say that that is the reason why your daughter won't make it I just it was just so heartbreaking to him and I felt really sorry that he had to keep it for this long because he didn't want to hurt me or upset me which I find funny because in my life I sometimes did worry about my name growing up I always tried to shorten it to make it easier for other people because it was hard to spell. It had so many letters and I just wanted to make everyone else's life easier. And now that I'm older and, you know, you get to choose your name on your bib and um, wear it with pride around the world, I'm so proud that I get to wear my dad's name, Ouso Efre, when I run around the world. Do you see, how do you encounter 
racism in an everyday sense for you? Does it still pop up for you? It does, but it's a lot more subtle, I find. I'm very lucky that I haven't had a lot of blatant racism and remarks and actions towards me. It's more the little comments. And I also think a lot of people don't understand some of the things they're saying when they speak. They might not think it's racist, but I found looking back on my life, a lot of those comments I still remember. And it's like they it wasn't even important. The situation could have been at the track or at a party or just walking with a friend. But when I look back, I could tell you exactly what they said and how still 15 years later or five years later, I can still think about it. Little things like you're really good looking for a black girl or like, you know, my features like, oh, you don't really have a big note, you know, even where are you from? Um, I was born in Australia. My parents are Australian citizens, but I find that question, if I answer a certain way, say I'm Australian, it comes with a, oh, but, you know, I mean, like, where are you really from? Because, you know, you don't look Australian, so I can't, that can't be the end of the question, I find. And to some people, they're just like trying to get to know you. But to me, I always go, okay, what do I say? Do I say Ghanaian? Do I say my parents were born from there? Do I say Australian? Would I get it? You know, you overthink those little remarks. And is there a sort of, I feel like there would be a sort of fork in the road mentality where on the one hand you go, I'll just make it easier for them. You're overthinking it. You're being too sensitive. You may be being a little bit too woke, Nana. And on the other hand, you're going, well, this subtlety is indicative of something that's much larger. So if I just call it out now it could help someone think in a different way like how what's that decision making process that goes on it's a lot of self-thought in the moment because you don't want to over exaggerate a situation that could have been meant a completely different way but I've learned over the years you can't help how you feel because those moments I regret not speaking up, I still think about it now, which is funny. You know, you're just walking down the street or something or something triggers your brain and you're like, damn it, I wish I said something. Like, if someone else was offended by something, they would speak up. And just because I think it's an uncomfortable topic for other people, and sometimes it was an uncomfortable topic for myself, I was just like, I'm, I'm just going to say nothing because maybe I am over-exaggerating it. Maybe they didn't mean it that way. But I guess if I don't speak up, they won't understand that that can offend me or that can make me feel not too good about myself. In the moments where you've potentially spoken up, when it's been a real, you know, micro, very subtle thing that's happened in a conversation, how has that normally played out? What does the other person respond generally with? I kind of read their tone while I'm saying it. And I feel like, I end up turning it back on myself. I go, oh, they kind of look uncomfortable. So let's make this a bit of a joke, you know? <laughs> you know, like, it's let's just work. brush it off. Like, oh, uh-huh. th- this is making us both uncomfortable. Clearly they didn't mean it that way. So I'm just going to slowly try and change the subject and just brush it off. And, you know, this is the first time they've said something like this. So they really didn't mean it. And I just try and kind of change the course because then I feel bad which is I find funny now looking back at it because in the first place they made me feel bad even if they didn't realize it that's how I felt would would you say that's part of a a lesson for you in knowing when to stand your ground like how do you feel about it now with things like the BLM movement you know really coming along I feel a lot more confident to say something now. I feel like I know that I'm not the only person that feels these little subtle comments and um, gets affected by them. So with the movement that's going on right now, I feel very empowered to go, you know what, by the way, that, that was not okay. That's, this is how it made me feel. You probably didn't mean it, but when you say a comment like that to someone, that's how, you know, my, this, these are my feelings. Have you had allies kind of, either side of you definitely I've had friends that have gone whoa you know that's mm, you know probably wouldn't have said that and I appreciate that so much because sometimes we don't have a voice and sometimes we don't know what to say but the fact that you have someone 
you know, supports you and can kind of see your side of it. I think that, like, I really appreciate those moments more than anything in the world. You've also spoken about the beauty industry and the subtleties that exist within that and potentially challenges. Tell me about that. Growing up and you start going to parties and stuff and getting dressed up with your friends, I found it a bit awkward because I felt like I could never join in those in those type of aspects because going and getting dressed up, for instance, and putting on makeup isn't as simple as just going, mum, can I have $10 to go to the drugstore and buy a foundation? It's a bit of a chase for me and a puzzle. Finding places that actually have shades that go to my shade is, it was very hard growing up and I found myself trying to get the darker shades and mixing them together and then not liking how I looked because I looked washed out and then having to save money because the only way I could almost feel pretty back then and have that experience with friends was spending 80 to a hundred dollars and going to a proper shop um, and spending all that money just to get one item. And um, growing up, growing up, I look back, it, it didn't make me feel good knowing that it wasn't as easy for me to access something so simple and basic that, females and males use in their life every single day it just made me feel very excluded um in a sense that it wasn't easy for me to do something so basic in life did you speak to any of your friends at the time or did you open up to your mom I did my mum because my mum had the same experiences not so much my friends because a lot of them didn't go through those experiences but my mum definitely you know she took a stand she doesn't really like to wear makeup um, anymore but she's she doesn't have to she's a beautiful woman but even in those times of getting dressed up it's not like just get your dress and your shoes and you're off when you want to you know change your look you know experiment it's another step it's a long process and you know that you have to budget and you have to make more of an effort than most people in their lives to do something so simple do you feel like that's changing now for you not necessarily I found that I've kind of just put up with it in a sense like I go if I want to dress up I'm gonna have to spend the hundred dollars just on one item you know that it it sounds funny but that's what I have to do there's no way around it um it seems like companies don't want to change and haven't changed yet there are so many beautiful women of different color and I think why not help them express their beauty anyone no matter what shade what color um, it, I'm, I find it quite sad, actually, that um, it hasn't changed in the 10 years of me growing up and starting to wear makeup, that I know that little girls right now in school who are having their first experiences might also have the same situation and have to go to their mum and go, why can't I? And there's no simple answer for that. On that point, how important is it for you to be who you are and to be someone that can exist in the public eye? for other girls to look at? I find in such a big sport with such a big platform, it is important to go to others. You are not alone. I had these experiences growing up and this is how I dealt with it. And I love how I can share my story in such a big sport, which is dominated by so many beautiful women and men of color. And we can all come together. And I'm loving how lately people are having a voice, no matter how big or small the problem is, it is a problem to them and it is okay to say something about it, which I'm loving. What would you say is your somewhat priority in terms of doing more and being part of the project? I think education. In the past couple of months, not only have I tried to educate my friends on situations, I've tried to educate myself more because I don't know everything. But in learning the different cultures and what people are going through, especially in Australia, which is such a multicultural country, people from all over the world, I think it's important to embrace, support, learn and listen about other people's stories because that's how we get braver and stronger. Do you feel positive in terms of the change moving forward? I know that sometimes these sorts of movements can be met with cynicism from people across the board. You're 100% right, but I love how more people are speaking and that gives me hope. 
Well, I love talking to my parents about what they went through and how they find what's happening and their thought process in it. And I think we all love how no matter what colour, what race, I find a lot more people are speaking up and a lot of people are not, are not afraid anymore to speak up. It's okay to have an opinion about such a taboo topic and a topic you don't know about, but that's where the education factor goes in. You know, it's so easy to go on social media and see something, look at it and not process it. But that processing factor I think is so important and I think a lot more people are doing it and you can see it and using that platform, which is really important. And you mentioned social media just then. The the idea of the a, a movement or a project like this living beyond just a post and having a real kind of authenticity to it as well. How important is that for you to see that and see real actions happening? Uh, social media lately is our world's let's be real. So I think using that as an education tool is so important. Um, you look at all the movements that have happened since all the outcry this year. I'm loving how I found my friends who I haven't even had a conversation about message me, see me post things and actually want to understand it and mm. get knowledge and information so they can help. I think I've learned a conversation is so important and so underestimated me having a conversation with a friend and then learning something and then going to the dinner table and going, mum, this is what I've learned. And then their mum going to say to someone else, it's a chain effect. And I think that can strike so many people's hearts, souls and minds and educate so many more people so quickly. And I think that's very underestimated. Just the simple one question that can answer a thousand topics and a thousand issues. For your takeaway in terms of what Australians can do in the subtlety, would it be that one thing, have the conversation? Yes, ask and answer. Because I think a lot of people with subtle racism don't understand where they've gone wrong. And just tapping them on the shoulder and being like, hey, mate, this is what's going on. This is my thought process and this is how I feel. I think can really strike someone's heart and them understand and then go, you know what? that was probably not the best thing to say. And then they can call out someone when they hear that. And it's just a chain effect again. And mm. that will stop one less person feeling that type of way. And even if you help one person feel good about themselves or stop them feeling sad about what's going on, I think that's so important and so underestimated. Just one little change is so important as one big change in someone's life. Nana, you are a pleasure. And <laughs> I thank you so much for your time today. No, thank you. Find ways you can do more at domoreproject.com.au.